Hey, hello, welcome to the Tallinn Town Council organizational meeting. It being 7 p.m., I'd like to, as the town manager, call this meeting to order. We have a very packed agenda tonight. So uh, why don't we get started with the, by rising for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. So you're probably wondering why the town manager is calling this meeting to order, but simply because we don't have a chairperson yet for the new town council, which is uh, one of the first things we're going to take care of tonight. Um, before we get started, I'd like to invite town clerk Sheila Bailey up to the front to swear in the new town council. Hello. If everyone could please stand and raise your right hands. Do you all solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Connecticut, as well as the Charter and Ordinances of the Town of Tallinn, and to faithfully discharge according to law your duties as members of Tallinn's Town Council to the best of your abilities to help you God? I do. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. So before we move on to agenda item number five, I just wanted to recognize that Councillor Lou Luba has requested to participate for the remainder of this meeting telephonically. Lou is actually on the phone on mute right now, so he can't hear anything that we're saying yet. Um, we actually need a motion to allow Lou to, uh, by majority vote, to participate in this meeting tonight telephonically. The minutes will reflect that Lou is participating via conference call and his uh, votes will be recorded for the minutes. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to allow Mr. Luba to participate telephonically in tonight's meeting. So moved. Second. Uh, so I have, a, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Or abstain? Very good, thank you. Passes unanimously. Um, I'm gonna come over and just unmute him. <laughs> Mr. Luba, are you there? Luba? Yeah. Lou, are you there? You gotta take your phone off mute if you're there. <laughs> oh. ah, so you, yes, you've been allowed to participate in tonight's meeting via telephone. Uh, so you feel free to, you know, interact as you would as if you were here in person. Okay, thank you. So our next item of business is election of chairperson for the next two years for this town council. Is there a motion uh, for chairperson? I move that we uh, nominate Tim Duccio to be the chair of the Tallinn Town Council. Is there a second? Second. Bob seconded, moved by John, seconded by Bob. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? I call that 700. Madam Chair, please feel free to take your sign and move to the chairperson's position. And also take care of breakfast. <laughs> First order of business for me is it is my honor to elect uh, to nominate uh, Stephen Jones as vice chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, Aye. any opposed? <laughs> Abstain? Motion passes. Thank you. Um, the next order of business tonight is the adoption of the meeting schedule and to set the time for the regular meetings um, and the attached packet that we have. There is a uh, listing of the meetings. Does anybody um, have any questions on the dates or uh, proposed time at 7 p.m.? <clears throat> Through you, Madam Chair, I make a motion to adopt the meeting schedule and set the time for the regular meetings as uh, stated in the packet. We have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? Or abstain? The motion passes. Um, the next thing on our agenda is the adoption of the rules and procedures, which is also in the packet. <laughs> Um, we are going to adhere to Robert's rules as our 
our practice for meetings. Um, in accordance with the bylaws, we'll run by Robert's rules to have constructive, uh, constructive conversation. Um, I personally encourage debate and discussion in a respectful manner. Um, we will, I will look to have, I will look to relax the rules of recognition for discussion, but if any discussion goes off track, then we'll enforce um, chair recognition. And the only other slight change that I have is in new business. When we're talking about new business, um, I'd like to add in an opportunity for anybody who's in the public um, to have a period of time for comment before we actually vote on something. Um, this was something that we've heard multiple times from many people about the structure of the meeting. And it was also in the debate as a way that we can communicate better with the town. So uh, by doing this, we'll give people the ability to hear what we're talking about, have input, <coughs> it, and then we will vote after considering that input. Um, does anybody have any questions about the rules or, or procedure? Are you going to be allowing to it before each item, or is it just going to be before new business? Because like, right now we have four things. So are you going to be doing um, allowing inputs between, before like 9.1, then 9.2, and 9.3, or is it going to be at the beginning for is it first? Um, it's not going to be, well, it's going to be dependent on if there are people in the audience that want to discuss any of the things, and it wouldn't be um, before the new business. It's going to be the new business is brought up by the town manager and discussed. And then we'll have an opportunity at that point if there's anybody in the audience that wants to discuss what he said or has any questions for us, we'll hear that and then we'll motion and second, we'll discuss and then vote. So Madam Chair, as these rules of procedure are detailed, there's no amendments to them tonight. It's just a procedural amendment that we're going to adhere to. Correct. Okay, yeah, no changes to the to the um, rules of procedure as they stand. It's just giving people an opportunity to speak about the items that we're speaking about specifically. Thank you. Through you, Madam Chair, I can a motion to adopt the rules of procedure as attached to the packet. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Motion passes. Um, that gets us to item nine on the agenda, which is new business. Um, number nine one is the annual meeting for the Town Public Library Foundation to discuss the foundation director's 2018-19 accomplishments, 2019-2020 goals, and the 2019-2020 approved budget, as well as an overview of the foundation activities over the past year. Um, Mike, do you have anything? Sure. Uh, is Linda Byam in attendance? I am. Oh, very good. Would you mind coming and joining us up here? Um, I just wanted to give, this is an annual thing that the council does. We, we usually, it's around this time of year, sometimes it's October, but we wanted to wait until the new council was in place before we had Linda join us this evening. So we're, we have a little bit of a, you're going to just sort of talk us through your memo, and uh, if there's any questions, we'll, I'm sure we'll ask you them. <laughs> okay. Uh, typically what I do is, uh, first of all, let me introduce myself for those who don't know me. My name is Linda Byam. I'm the president of the Tallinn Public Library Foundation Board of Directors. And as uh, the town manager just mentioned, that I typically come and give an annual report in October, uh, but it was suggested that I delay to um, introduce myself and um, give a little bit more of an overview of the organization um, and what we do and how we serve the library. Um, I have uh, written a letter that explains our, um, our uh, directors, our accomplishments, our goals, and our budget, which is in your packet. And typically what I do is I'll walk through that, but. Um, I know you guys have a packed agenda tonight, so what I'd like to do, if that's okay, is you have the memo and you can call me with that. I'll, I'll hit on some of the highlights of that, but I'd like to spend a little bit more time discussing a little bit more about what the foundation is and how we do serve the library. Um, so the Town Public Library Foundation was created by the Town, Town, Town Council in 1996 uh, to establish a vehicle for public support to our library. This nonprofit foundation is run by a board of directors made up of community members. And the way that it came about in 1996 was there was a request to the town um, that if there were a board or a vehicle or a place to make a bequest or keep money that could be specifically for the benefit of the library without flowing through the town funds, then a family would be willing to make a bequest and thus the, the foundation was created. 
Um, and for probably 10 years, the foundation you know, really had no bequests. So they did some fundraising and they had some small funds. And then um, our, the purpose is to assist the Talent uh, Library in meeting its strategic needs and also to establish this endowment fund um, for the enhancement and the ongoing support of the library to cover things that aren't covered in the, the municipal budget. Um, the initial uh, bequest was received in 2009, and that was about $500,000 from the Eaton Dimmick King family. Um, we had a follow-up uh, piece of that donation, which was an additional about $250,000 that was um, received a little bit later uh, when the estate was wrapped up. Um, other significant bequests include um, one from Newman's Own Foundation in 2011 for $6.5,000. And most recently, we received um, a, a $36,000 bequest from the uh, state of Lewis Barlow Cox Quarry. So um, we do have our endowment now. And um, so I want to explain the, um, the structure of the, the foundation. Each sitting member of the Talent Town Council is actually a member of the Talent Public Library Foundation. That's the way the bylaws are written. Um, and the Town Council appoints and elects the board of directors. Um, and the annual meeting is when the board of directors come and they um, discuss with you what their accomplishments are and their, their budget. Um, so the board of directors is the governing board of the foundation and possesses the power and authority to control and manage the affairs of the funds of the foundation. The board is made up of myself, um, the president. The vice president is Danny Titterton. The treasurer is Jan Rubino. The secretary is Kate Farish. And we have directors Cliff Vachon, Allison Hygus, and Kristen Morgan. Um, we have a full board right now. Uh, the library director, Barbara Pettijohn, and the Talent Director of Finance and Records, Lisa Hancock, um, are also, um, um, what's the word? Ex Ex thank you, ex officio members of our board. So they um, attend the meeting when they need to, but they are not voting members. Um, so we have regular meetings five times a year. Typically, they are on the second Monday of, the, of five months in January, March, June, September, and November. Um, those I publish with Sheila, our meetings and our, our minutes and our agendas are on the town our own website. Um, our next meeting is uh, next Monday, and um, we're going to have um, the town manager um, sitting in on that meeting, and we're thrilled to have him there so he can learn a little bit more about the day-to-day -day activities that we have. Um, and I just want to talk about some of our recent accomplishments. Again, it's, it's detailed much more in that letter about what we've done. But basically, we take the income that we have now from, we have a professionally, our endowment is professionally managed, and we take the income from that endowment. And some of the things that we funded recently are um, online databases and subscriptions, A to Z database, Ancestry.com, JobNow, and EventKeeper. Um, those cost about $5,000 that we've uh, supported. We've provided um, a $1,000 funding for a three-month trial at Hoopla, which is a streaming service for eBooks and other digital material, which is available to all library patrons. We purchased about $1,000 of um, items to support the STEM programs hosted by the Young Adult Children's Area, which includes uh, 3D doodle printing pens, Lego sets, Dash and Dot robots, Harry Potter coding kits, iPads, and covers. Um, we support the ongoing family game nights, to purchase games and other items that can be checked out. We've provided funding to renew the license that allows the library to um, show popular movies. We support the purchase of necessary maintenance items for the maker space, and in the past we've also purchased the 3D printer and we've outfitted the maker space in the library. We are currently in the 10th season of the popular Eaton Dimmick King um, author series in which we host popular authors that come in and speak. Um, and we also maintain our website. Right now we have the ability to take donations online um, and then we do uh, maintain some social media accounts that we try to keep current. We uh, continue to increase the awareness of the foundation because there's the foundation for the library, there's the advisory board, and there's the friends. And a lot of people don't understand the difference. But the foundation is um, the organization with the endowment that um, provides direct financial support and works very closely with the library director and her staff to try to um, align um, and support her direct needs. 
Um, and so we do try to raise awareness of the foundation as a United Way designated recipient, and we've been and with third parties as well, and we've been quite successful with that. And we continue every year to get additional donations through those organizations like Benevity and United Way. Um, so the goals of the foundation, um, along with the library director and staff, will continue to focus on a long-term vision of focus grants to really substantially improve the library. And um, those grants are based on our endowment income, depending on how much we have each year, and they can fluctuate. Um, and we really are focusing at this point, and it's kind of a, an initiative, the evolution of the library, which really um, seeks to promote the changing role of a public library um, in this contemporary community, um, going from a book repository to more of a social um, hub of the community. So I'm happy to take any questions that you guys have now. That's really what I had um, prepared to talk to you about. Um, I have submitted the letter with all the budget and everything with permission, but I'm happy to take any questions that you have now or later. Um, huge thank you for everything that you and all the volunteers do. Um, I have used a number of the items under your accomplishments, oh, good. All, along with my daughter, and we really appreciate And I, every time I go in, there's other people there using uh, some of the programs that you have available. Um, you really helps make our library a gem of our community. Okay. And um, I totally understand and appreciate it, not just being the book lending. And it is becoming a community hub. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, Linda, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Have you guys looked into possibly using Amazon Smiles as a? Um, yes, we do. Well, that's one of our. Um, that's one of our organizations as well. So we do get some um, some donations to Amazon Smiles. Do you advertise that through the libraries? We do. We, you know, we have a limited amount of advertising, but we do have that on our website. We have you know our code that we can do that with United you know, Way. So we do. That's good. Yeah. Linda, the the, um, for the online contributions is that directly through the foundation? Is that through United Way? Um, we take both. Okay. You know, we can. If somebody wanted to make a donation to the foundation directly, a personal donation, we you could make that through the the website, okay. or write a check, or leave with Barbara, or contact a, a foundation member. But the United Way, those do not come through the website. Those come through like a, a back door that okay. you know, like the employee signs up. The United Way puts in our code, and then we get a check directly from the United Way and Benevity and other organizations when you choose our organization. Okay, awesome. and, we, and those have been increasing significantly every year. It doesn't offer the opportunity for um, recurring contributions, or is it usually? It does. Down? Yes. Okay. Yes. Typically, they're recurring, so we see the same donors um, every every you know, several times a year. Yeah. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Can we do? Um, information from the town like an e-blast to let people know they can sign up for registration you know for Amazon smiles and other things sure if we, if we yeah. work together we can post something on the, the news feed and we can blast the subscribers okay out there. and we do have um Kate Farish is our publicity person she's a you know a journalism professor so she's wonderful at doing all that and um we do encourage and like when we were at the um Talland uh, celebrate Talland we really did a push for the United Way because that was the kind of open enrollment and the time that you could choose that. Mm -hmm. And so we did get some some new people to sign up. But we will continue to do that and we'll get that through the, the town manager's office too. Thank you for that suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, the nine point next item on the agenda is 9.2, consideration of a resolution authorizing an additional appropriation of $715,535 for the change order for the acquisition, installation, and removal of portable classrooms and certain other costs and the financing of said entire appropriation by state grants and the setting of a public hearing thereon for November 26, 2019. So this is basically just to set the public hearing. Yes, thank you for clarifying. I was gonna mention that. So anyway. basically there are, there are three things that uh, we just wanna clarify tonight. So number one is that this is purely for the portable, also known as the modular phase to the Birch Grove project. This is not money that's going towards the construction phase. The second thing is, as you mentioned, Madam Chair, that this it's, all our action is tonight is to simply set the public hearing for our next regular meeting in two, two weeks from tonight. Um, and then the third thing that's worth mentioning off the bat is there's a letter in your packet from the director of the Office of School Construction and Grants from the state. 
Department of Administrative Services, um, guaranteeing that this money is going to be funded through state money and not local town money. So this is a commitment from uh, Costa saying that this is the state is going to fund this change order. Okay, so um, with that, I don't think it makes sense to talk about anything else since we're just setting the public hearing date right now. So, can I get a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to that the following resolution be introduced and set for a public hearing on November 26 at 7 p.m. in Tallinn County Council Chambers. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Can't get used to it. Opposed? <laughs> um, Absentia? Then passes. Okay, um, item 9.3 Consideration and action on approval. Uh, on approving the revised Human Service Administrative Secretary to job description. So since this isn't a consideration and an action, this is where I would say after we talk about it, if anybody in the audience has any questions, we'll open up to public comment. You can ask your questions and then we will go on debate. So okay. Sure, so this is a bit of a bittersweet uh, item for us because on the one hand, we're losing um, Bridget Joy, who has been in this position for I think around five years and has done a dynamite job in this position. But the good news is, is that we're able to tailor the position now to actually fit the needs of the Human Services Department. Um, I know uh, Bev would have liked to have been here. She's at the building committee meeting downstairs right now. But um, we, Mike Wilkinson, the Director of Administrative Services, and I have met with Bev to talk about the true needs of what this position should do. And uh, since we have an opportunity now that the job is vacant, we wanted to go through and redline the current job description. If you see, the last time that this job was prepared, uh, job description was in 2004. So there are some things on the old job description that weren't even relevant anymore, like taking dictation from like machines and things. So um, we've gone through, redlined it, uh, and, and Mike has shared with the union, the CSEA, these changes. I don't believe we've had any comment on the changes. Nope. No comment on the changes. So um, at this point, in order for us to post the job publicly and get some good applicants to apply for this job, we wanted your blessing to uh, approve this job description as amended. Okay, at this time, does anybody in the audience have anything they would um, like to provide in public comment for this? Okay, seeing nothing. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd uh, make a motion to consider the action of approving the revised Human Services Administrative Secretary to job description. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? And it passes. Uh, good luck with getting that posted, and please tell Bridget she will be sorely missed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And on to 9-4. We're moving right along. Like the Muppets. Um, <laughs> consideration to accept appointments to vacancies on various municipal boards, commissions, as referred to memo from Lynn, dated uh, November 12, 2019. And this is a large one because it's the beginning of a new Correct. council. So. Yes. Um, I don't know how you want to. Yep. I actually have a draft motion, but I wanted to, obviously the opportunity for anybody to comment. These are 11 reappointments. These are not new appointments. We will address new appointments in our next meeting. We have a candidate for uh, Board of Assessors alternate and uh, maybe one or two others that are coming your way that are new. Um, these are simply people who wish to have another term on their respective boards. So uh, what I looked in the minutes from the last time we had a slate like this, and we actually motioned at that time to accept the slate of reappointments as presented in the memo dated November 12, 2019 from Lynn Bialowick, Executive Assistant. Um, that would be the motion you might want to read. Madam Chair, if you make a motion to uh, endorse the slate of appointed uh, commission members to fill the vacancies effective uh, November 12, 2019. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? The motion carries. And thank you to all the volunteers. And thank you definitely to the volunteers and to the people who are sending in requests now. Um, there's still quite a few openings on here. So anybody want to go through and look at them and send us information, we will gladly find a place to put you. Um, the next item on the agenda is 9.5, which is a report of the town manager. Sure. So good evening again, everybody. So um, this, since this being the first meeting of the month, you have a full written report. There's also a copy 
for public inspection there if anybody wishes to see it. Um, these are uh, submissions for the new people in the council. These are submissions that department heads send to the town manager's office um, to update on goings on in their various departments and also to maybe advertise for some things that are coming down the line that might be nice to attend as counselors or for the public to know about. Um, generally what I do, what I like to do is also talk a little bit about what I've been up to so that you know that you're, I'm doing my job properly. So uh, a couple of things that I've been working on is I've been having capital budget meetings with all of the various departments. We have one more to go tomorrow uh, in preparation for the December council meeting where we're going to be talking about capital budget. Um, in the written report, I wanted to point out two notes as well. Uh, one thing is that we are actually not, we, one of the positions that was opened on the town side was for the town engineer role. This is a position that has historically been difficult to fill. Um, we had money budgeted in this fiscal year for a staff person, but due to a, sort of just a lack of applicants in general, we're deciding to just use that money for contracting services instead, engineering consulting services. And so we're moved the money out for this fiscal year and also we're thinking about reposting the job in fiscal 21. But for the time being, we're shifting that money to, to consulting. Um, that's that's detailed in your memo from, I believe, but Heidi's report covers that. Um, the other thing to note is that uh, in recreation, Bruce is using $40,000 from the Recreation Special Revenue Fund for gym flooring rehabilitation. And this is something that it's, it's detailed in, in his memo to you, but it's something that didn't have to necessarily wait for the capital budget process. It's something that Recreation has a special revenue fund for to fund. And uh, they're, they voted, uh, their board voted to um, take on this project sooner rather than later. Um, I attended uh, Economic Development Committee meeting on November 6th, and uh, we also had a follow-up meeting over the weekend to talk to somebody who's a new business owner who's interested in perhaps locating to Tallinn. It's exciting, um, something that we'll get more details on in the future. Um, the, this morning, I also went to a CCM meeting in Cromwell, specifically geared towards small community, uh, small communities, and we talked a little bit about how you know, regional efforts are important. And it was the first meeting of a new subcommittee, so I figured it would be good to represent Tal and to advocate for our needs. Um, so in your packets as well, so everybody has a listing of the liaison assignments from last <coughs> council term. Um, those who are new to the board, you'll have them in your orientation packets. For those who are, are on their next term, you should have the standalone liaison assignments. Basically, all I'm just giving them to you tonight is to think about over the course of the next two weeks and between now and, and our next regular meeting to let myself and, and the chairperson, Tammy, know um, about which liaison assignments you would like to um, entertain to be your assignments for the next two years. Um, also in your packets, uh, for those who are new, um, there's information about how to access your town email accounts. There are three options, and you'll have to let me know at offline about which option you would prefer. Three options are detailed in that memo. Uh, just please connect with me after this so we can set you up properly. Uh, Mr. Luba, also that applies to him as well, so he has that information. And um, uh, one last thing I want to sort of end on a happy note. Um, so we really like our projector system we have. But um, some people have pointed out that there are times where it's not very ADA compliant. There's very small lettering on there and things. So we were able to put together a plan to uh, revamp our projector system with a computer. And that's going to be, be, be a TV screen. And zoning maps are going to look very nice on there, especially. The, good, the best news of all is that there's no taxpayer dollars that are going towards this acquisition. It's being funded through a grant program that the town clerk's office has graciously given us some money uh, that they had received for was, is it small is it a town's grant or it's a it's a grant that the state put um, a surcharge onto land records to help fund some projects that towns typically can't afford in the budgets. So it's fantastic. Um, some of the parts have started to arrive. We didn't want to get going with it until this meeting was over, and by the next meeting we should have it up and running. But it's going to be more cl clarity is going to be improved. People will be able to see the maps and, and, and simple lettering and things like that. There's also some other advantages if you're curious. There, um, There's wiring that used to run. I guess you can kind of see it here, but there's a bit of a tripping hazard, and this will solve the tripping hazard as well. So all around, it's great, and we're excited to implement that. A um, couple other things just to mention. Sorry, I'm taking a lot of time here. Take your um, time. We have a couple of upcoming events that I just want to point out. So there's a groundbreaking ceremony at Birch Grove at 3 p.m. on November 14th. 
that's pretty exciting. Um, He's still so, funding. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was going to say there's no chairman's no. report on here this time. I'm uh, just going to ask to happen. Okay, well, everybody forget I said that. No, that's right. Uh, no, good. <laughs> so, uh, November 13th and 14th, the Government Accountability Office, also known as the GAO, will be in Tallinn. To, to, they're going to be conducting discussion groups for pre selected homeowners affected by capital <laughs> foundations. So they're actually using Holland as a bit of a base of operations for two days. Now they've gone through and selected the people that they're doing workshops with. And, but we, the good news is, is that we have them here. I know Steve Werger is involved. I'm gonna be attending tomorrow night in any capacity that they'd like me to be a part of. So I'm looking forward to greeting the GAO and seeing how I can be of service. Um, so that's exciting. And uh, two other quick things. Um, it's been brought to my attention that a good date for our goal setting meeting would be December 8th, which is a Sunday. Um, I am tracking down a proper venue to host this goal setting session. Um, the time will likely be a 12 noon start time. Generally, it's gonna go about three to four hours. So we'll get some food, it'll be fun, but uh, I, goal setting is very important for us to tackle as soon as possible. Um, lastly, our next regular scheduled council meeting on the 26th will begin at 6.30 p.m. with an executive session. Please note your calendars for that small change. That's all I have for now. Does anybody have any questions for me? I do. Yeah, that. Um, I noticed on the, the manager's report that we have 50, 55 new applications for crumbling foundations and we had 17 repairs. Do you have a total number of what we're at right now? So I know um, the assessor is working on this pretty diligently right now. I don't know off the top of my head, and I might defer to Mike if he knows. Mike, do you have the idea? Uh, I don't. I think it was in the one. I don't, I don't want to put a number in there. That's not right. But, yeah, no, but that's basically, fine. we can get that number for you. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, but some are coming back online, which is which is positive. Yeah, it said 17 that were coming back so far. Yeah. So I'd like to see if we can get the net number on that. And if um, how we're how we're doing on the, I'm sorry, the the total that are on that total are all the houses that are on abatement right now. Correct. Right. right. That's right. Okay. Um, and lastly, do you know when we should have a final tally on the reval or when we're close to it? So I, again, Jason's working on it diligently. I think, he, I, I saw him earlier today. Um, I would say probably within a month or so, we're gonna be, we're, I mean, I, I'm, we're, we're working together on it. So he's well aware that we're looking for that information because it's very important for the budget cycle to know that information. So um, if you'd like, and after this meeting, I can email Jason and just see if, if he has an answer, I will shoot it out to all of you. Um, doesn't have to be after hours, we can be done the business day, that's fine. Sure. Um, and then uh, one of the things that's in there often, but that's coming up now again, is the assistance programs. Um, and I was wondering if there's a way to ask Bev um, or whoever's in charge of that down there, if we're at a flat or increase or decrease for the amount of people who are participating. And then um, I just wanted to kind of go around the, the, the household guidelines. I believe those are set by the state. Mm -hmm. And I think they're the same ones that we use for Ordinance 60, but I wanted to... Um, see if that's the case and if we know when the last time we've looked at those um, that's, fair. Limits. Yeah. that's that's a good point we'll, we'll definitely I can find that information out for you okay and then I don't know um, um, the holiday program was also announced announced for families um, that are struggling and I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to get that out on eblast um, I know Talon cares was just doing something with picking up tens of families but if we can get that out on eblast so people know that um, there's availability to help families in town I can certainly do that. Is there an article or something that I can point to? Uh, um, yeah. There was something in the in the manager's report. It's okay. just something that comes out of the human services area. Every okay. year they do the, the Thanksgiving, the Christmas packages and that. And I know one year they, it's kind of how Talon Care started, is one year they were struggling with fulfilling all the needs of the, the families that they had. So a bunch of people kind of got together and just did it. Um, so I'd like to see if we can get that out to everybody and That's maybe get idea. some, some uh, people to sign on to that. And then um, I just didn't know because we don't have a chair of report on here. I had a couple of things that I wanted to point out like you just did. There's a few other things coming up that I thought would be good to point out. Um, you know? have issue. Yeah. I'm piggybacking off of my mind. That's mm -hmm. I don't know if we need a motion for that. This is a new one. Okay. So the thing we just add it, get a motion to add it. To I was going to say we could add it to the agenda, but it wouldn't be in the same order as typical because okay. I would want to do it before the executive session. So it's okay. Just make a motion to add it. Yeah. I think you need a two-thirds vote, I believe. 
to edit. To edit, not that I have any problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> I got the phone too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand motion to add in 9.8 um, chairperson's uh, correspondence to the council. Let me get that. Better. A second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Abstain? I think we got the two thirds. So I'll do that at 9.8 then. Okay. So now you're Yes. <clears throat> so uh, 9.6, adoption of minutes. And we were questioning before, like, how do we, there's really blue, there's four of us here, so let's, let's <coughs> form. No, it doesn't matter if you were here or not, you just motion them to be accepted. I knew you had said that before, but I didn't know if like the new people wanted to move at all. Oh, we're just uh, we're we're gonna get a motion for the minutes, Lou. Okay. And I'd indicate a motion to adopt the uh, minutes. Are you motion to exclude? Yes. And I'll second. All in favor? I'm sorry. Throwing out. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Uh, motion passes. Uh, 9.7 is correspondence to council, and um, I have something here from Dairy Farms. Did you take it? Uh, no, it still should be there. Is it still there? I'm picking it up. It, 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 it was like, there was like so many things at the top of my packet right now. Um, basically, it, it, they are once again extending um, their closure date to the end of November, which still not great news because they're closing but good news for the workers that they'll be able to be there through the end of november so that's um all that we have from a chair perspective right now and brenda do you want to continue what you were doing last absolutely. time and absolutely so um i printed out and i have email open we have not received anything since um i did the printing but we did have one email from madhu Brenda chala i think i got that pretty much right um as we know he's he's um, said he's interested in the Board of Assessment Appeals, which we'll look at next time. We received um, three emails from another resident, um, one of them about banning the sale of sugar and artificially sweetened drinks in the schools. And I believe the state of Connecticut already does that. I heard this, they, they um, ban the sale of sodas. But I didn't know if it was for the, um, if that also included artificially sweetened fruit juices. I believe so. it does. Karen is here, but I, yeah. I think it does. I think when they, I remember when my daughter was in, like way back in like 2008, they had the ban on sugary treats in the vending machines and juices and sodas. But yeah, I'm not positive on that. But yeah, I it wasn't positive. Have, yeah, I mean, I know there's milk and. So <laughs> I asked my daughter what's in the vending machines, and she goes, "I don't go over there." <laughs> so, well, um, as far as the cafeteria, right? Food. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, well, might know. There's yeah. nothing good in those machines. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then he also mentioned, uh, this resident also mentioned um, a webinar that's happening tomorrow um, that we had all received. And um, another one about environmental um, issues of impacting towns. So um, I will pass them over. I'm going to have a long row now. Yeah, exactly. That's right. I can hand them over afterwards. Um, and I don't know if I'm supposed to have a copy of the minutes to sign to it to Lisa. Yeah. Do you have, okay, all right. Okay, then we just added 9.8, um, and for now that's gonna be the oh. chairman's report. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, we did have one more. We had, um, Madhu also sent in an email supporting um, the, asking us not to reject the two contracts. And for some reason I don't have that printed. I apologize. It's okay. I'll forward it to you. Yes. Okay, so 9.8, I'm going to just add a quick uh, chairman's report. A um, couple of things that I also wanted to mention besides the Birch Grove um, groundbreaking is the Board of Ed budget workshop is 11.20 at 7 p.m. in the library, I believe. Um, and then uh, the senior center birthday lunch is on 11.21 at noon. And um, one of the other things that I'm going to be reinstituting effective immediately with the first week in December is we will be doing Chairman's Hour on the first Thursday of um, every month at 6.30 here at Town Hall. I'm not sure which conference room it will be in yet, but it will be here. And I'm also going to reach out to um, our elected House of Representatives and Senates to see, Senator, sorry, and see if um, every few months one of them wants to join us. So it will be me plus the state representative, if anybody wants to come in and have a chat or talk or 
just sit there for an hour. Um, that's all that I have for that. So now that gets us up to number 10, public list of participation on any subject within the jurisdiction of the town council, three minute limit. If you want to come up, just state your name and address and fire away. Chris George. Hi, George. Hi, I'm back again. George Eldridge, Fish Game Road. Uh, let's start with a simple one. Uh, you have three appointments. Can you explain the first one to me? <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only person yes. who's asked that, George. It sounds kind of funky. The fence, you know, right? yes. the, the fence viewer is a position that's, um, I think it was almost 200 years old. And it is a position that was used in um, when farmers would put up the rock fences and other fences. And if there was any dispute, he would be the he or she, but probably a he, would come out and um, make a judgment on the fences. So he was kind of um, some sort of an authority figure for the fences. And it's something we've never gotten rid of. It's, we've kept yeah. it's historic, it's um, historically fun to still have. Um, I believe it's Bob Rubino too, right? It is like Bob Rubino is the fence viewer. And um, I, I know like we have a lot of historic rock walls and stuff like that in yeah. town too. I think he looks at them from like the you know, if anybody yeah, has if, questions I, if ever anybody has a dispute about their, their rock walls, walls, they're, they're welcome to. You better say, okay, the surveyor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, on, on the 9.2, what's the, uh, the thing about the 715,000? Uh, I, thought, I thought the state had already agreed to pay for everything as far as affordable classroom. That's correct. It, so that if the, 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 the counselors have a memo from the, um, the building, sorry, I didn't get the actual thing. So the director of Office of School Construction and Grants saying that it's going to be state grant funded. It's just that this, were, this was a change order. Um, tonight, all we did was set the public hearing two weeks from tonight to hear more about this. But to, uh, tonight's business item was just to set that. There's there's some more detailed information about what comprises the change order, but that's really more for the public hearing itself and not to set the public hearing. So, but it shouldn't be something that we'd be paying for as a town. If the, the, the state is committed to pay that 715 number, 535, not the town. Okay, and the, the third one was the, uh, the foundation meeting. So you're saying those are tomorrow? The next day? They're tomorrow and the next day, but they've been pre-selected homeowners from the, uh, the GAO reached out to those homeowners directly. Um, I didn't have any, or the, our town didn't have oversight on who was selected for the so is that, is that open to the public? We can't all go? My understanding is it's not open to the public. It's more for them to do a focus group of people affected. It's not just Tallinn residents, it's Tallinn County residents. So it's, but we're hosting them here since we're the epicenter of the issue. So if you have one of those foundations, you can't go to the meeting. If they have reached out to you, and I'm not sure how they solicited it. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious who they, how they did pick the people they picked. We're just so, kind of housing the meeting. Like yeah. we're not running the meeting. We're not like doing anything like that. We're yes. just, we're just like, they're coming and using the yeah. town hall to do it. So, you know, we're, it's, it's good because we're the epicenter. We have a lot of people affected and Mike will get to hopefully sit in on some of it and that. And it'll be helpful, but we don't control any part of it. We're not facilitating it in any way, except for it's good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get after these people, get some more money. And my understanding is they've already run out of money and are not taking any new people yet for foundations because everything's already been spoken for, even though it hasn't been released yet. It's already, and now they're already talking about giving more money to condos and everything else. So we don't even have any of that money. So we're gonna have to, this, 120 million or whatever it is, just a, a tip of the iceberg. I mean, we've got hundreds of people that can't even apply anymore because they're not taking any applications right now. They're so overwhelmed. I mean, they haven't even hit, they're hoping to have uh, somewhere around 70, 75 foundations done by the end of the year. They've already got 700 committed. So, I mean, we, we were doing a boom dial here, and Tallinn is the epicenter of it. That was the, during the boom when all this foundation went in, when Tallinn was growing. Percentage wise, we have more foundation than anybody else, any other <coughs> town, plus we were the closest. That's why that happened. Well, I would encourage you, George, to come to the chairman's hours, especially the ones when we have the state representatives there, to continue to push that, and we will also stay on top of that. When's the next one of those scheduled? Well, the first one is going to be the first Thursday in December, so I think that's. Let me check for you, George. Let me check for you. It's going to be December 5th. 
I don't know where yet. It'll be on the calendar on the website, but it'll be December 5th at 6.30 here. That okay. one will just be me, because I don't think I can get anybody here that quick. They're much more important than I am, so okay. we'll get them for as soon as we can. All right, I just wanted to welcome everybody. Thank you, George. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll all get to know me. Whether <laughs> that's good or bad. Thank you, George. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. Katie Murray, 8 Lisa Lane. I just wanted to uh, introduce myself as chair of the Birch Grove Building Committee and um, let you know that I look forward to working with you over the next two years as we finish up the building of the new Birch Grove building. Building. New Birch Grove building. <laughs> Thank you. Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody? Anyways? Going once? Going twice? All right. Uh, moving on. I move. Oh, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> Madam Chair, if you would like to make a motion to uh, enter into executive session. And I think we need to... For, for, yeah. Oh, for the purposes of a uh, strategy for collective bargaining negotiations. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to invite in Mike, um, Dr. Willett, uh, Karen, uh, Michelle, with Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Jeff. Uh, anybody, is that anybody else? Yes. So it's, it's important to clarify too that we may return to public session. Yes. If we do so, we will have the camera back on and the, and the recording clerk will be back as well. Yes, so is that it? Second. Yeah. We need a motion, I second it. You second it. Oh, okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? All right, motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just waiting on Okay, um, we are going to have a special meeting on Tuesday, November 19th in conference room B at 7.30 to um, review and finalize our decision on both the teacher, um, teacher and administration contract for the Board of Ed. And with that, um, I go to item number 14 on our agenda. Wait, sorry, just to clarify, do we have to vote to to do to extend these to the 19th or is that just nope, the okay yep yeah, they'll be okay. taken care of at the next meeting okay great um i would entertain a motion madam chair for you to adjourn the meeting second any discussion well, no all those in favor aye. 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 any opposed abstain motion passes yeah. thank you all for a great first meeting